All right, guys, today we're going to be covering five, oh, three, what? Oh, please don't touch me. Oh, where did you get those muscles? Uh, from five, three, one. Oh, five, three, one. I know all about this. Start with the f go all in and then you have one in the mouth, right? And then he three just keeps into the all the time under the I know all about that. Uh, no, it's a strength training program. Oh, well, it strengthens some of my parts. Okay. Yeah. 531 is a fairly straightforward and simple lifting program. For this video, we'll be covering the basics, essentially how it works, and our experiences and thoughts on it after running it for about 15 months, though not always consecutively and not super recently. Its creator, Jim Wendler, has written four books on the topic, so there's a lot more than we can cover in one video. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It sounds like you put a lot of effort into this, but I'm gonna come back during my expertise, which is the loading, but until then, you know. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the iterations of the program, but as Winnie just hinted at, I've probably spent way too much time trying to whittle this video down to the core essentials of the program while hinting at some of the evolution it's gone through. But at its core, it is a very simple and effective program. You essentially have your main lifts and your accessory work. It is going to tell you what to load and what to do. And if you enjoy spreadsheets and tracking your gains, well, you're gonna love this video because it's got a lot of that. 531 is a strength training program that revolves around cycles, not that type of cycle, where each cycle lasts three to four weeks depending how you run the program. During each week that you work out, you will complete three to four exercises in that one week. And then for each day you work out, you'll complete one of four primary compound exercises that the entire program is based around. And followed by that, that primary exercise, you'll do accessory work. And that accessory work is entirely based on complementing that primary exercise. If that sounds confusing, it's entirely my fault. So I'll make a couple animations and things that hopefully make things smoother and a little bit clearer. Now your four main lifts, which are bench, squat, overhead press, and deadlift, the staples of many strength programs, follow the 5-3-1 repetition scheme throughout each week and cycle. Now this is just the order I complete them in, not a requirement. That's three sets of five on the first week, three sets of three on the second week, and a 5-3-1 scheme on the final week for each lift. Now the weight you'll be repping is based on percentages. And as I've touched on, there's a lot of ways to customize this program. So I'll show you the fresher and heavier percent variations. Make note that the final percentages don't change, except for deloading. Whichever variation you choose for that main lift, you're gonna rest three to five minutes between sets. And for your accessory exercises, you would rest one to two minutes between sets. Now for your final set, your top set, your last set of the day on that main lift, you're gonna do as many reps as possible. And that's so that you can set a new PR for that weight. Now that is not to absolutely snap your spine in half failure. You need to control the weight, but that's the set that matters. And that's what that plus sign indicates. Think of the rep count as a minimum. That set is your gains. So pump yourself up and do your best. We'll hit on deloading later since Jim has modified his original template. But for now, just know that there's a few ways on how to handle it. Now, each day is dedicated to one lift. So if you only work out three days a week, you'd complete the fourth day the next week and then move forward. After you successfully complete a cycle, which means completing all of your reps throughout the three weeks, the weight increases and you repeat the whole thing again. To add weight to the exercises, you increase upper body exercises by five pounds, so bench and overhead press, and add 10 pounds for lower body exercises, so squat and deadlift. Before you start the program, you need to know your maxes in the four lifts, or at least their approximations, because that's how the program calculates your lift numbers. Now, it's not necessary to have a true PR, nor is that always a safe and logical thing to go and pursue, but if you've been lifting long enough, you probably have a rough idea anyway. And if you don't have a rough idea of your maxes, you can always use a one rep max calculator. Take for example, your five rep max in squat and it'll find your max from there. I don't like to use higher rep counts in those calculations because the higher your rep count goes, the less accurate those formulas are. Then you're gonna take that one rep max that you just found and take 90% of it 
and then calculate all your numbers from there. If it sounds like a lot of math, it's really not that bad and there's apps and spreadsheets that will do it all for you. I'll link mine in the description if you wanna use it. Just input your max and it'll do the rest. Just make sure you make a copy of it so it doesn't get hundreds of edit requests like my small off table does. And let's use bench press as another example. Let's say you're benching 315 for a one rep max because isn't that where everybody starts? Well, 90% of 315 is 283 and a half. Round it up because who's gonna round their bench down, which maybe you should, but that ruins the joke, is 285 pounds. You take that 285 pounds and calculate based off that. Why 90%? If it sounds too light and slow to start, it's to take the ego out of the equation. Lifting is a marathon, so you wanna strive for slow and steady progress versus cheating yourself and hurting yourself long-term. Notice I didn't say, probably hurting yourself. If you do things wrong, you will eventually make things worse. Now let's get into the assistance work. You do your accessory exercises after that main lift and their entire purpose is to complement that main lift and help you get more PRs on that lift, not detract from it. Now there's a ton of accessory versions you can do. And rather than go into details on them because there's just so many and there's variations of the variations, I'm just gonna link to his books in the description and a lot of other resources, but honestly, nobody can explain his program better than him. Now there's Boring But Big, which is probably the most popular assistance work variation, where after your primary lift, you follow them up with five sets of 10. There are variations to that as well that came about in Beyond 531, and from him tweaking and expanding the program options for years. There's Bodybuilder, which is similar to what I did, where your accessory work is high volume, hypertrophy, kind of like a bro split, and I believe he outlines this in his 531 second edition book. And there's even things like 863, which is an interpretation and adaptation by Brad Kazmarski, which I'm showing to demonstrate how others have made their own twist on 531. Hell, I do my own variation that's pretty much like an 8553, but maybe that's a future video. When it comes to progress, I've watched people work out for years and get nowhere. No physical change, no strength gains. This is a rep-based PR program. If you're squatting 225 for five this month and 225 for six next month, that's a 20% gain in reps. That's progress and it's impressive. Don't compare yourself to others, compare you to you and fuck Bowie. those fake Instagram people. You'll eventually figure it out and if you control the things you can control, you will get bigger and stronger. Now let's talk about that unfortunate point when you will eventually stall. Sometimes lifting is like a relationship. You're trying to hit a home run, but you only get to third base, but either way, you're still getting big. Now, if you miss a lift, which means missing one of your prescribed reps so you can't get uh, five reps on your final set of your first week, then, and, and that's something that's going to eventually happen because you can't consistently add weight to all your lifts forever. Then you just recalculate your one rep max, meaning take your newest max from the lift you just failed in the program, take 90% of it and start again. Now that can be a tough pill to swallow, but you have to think long-term. You can't be your strongest every day and you've made great progress. So focus on that. And even resetting to a new one rep max, well, you weren't there five months ago, right? So that's a lot of progress. Now, I guess that's enough hollow Instagram speak for one night, so let's just move on. I've tried to keep this video to the basic version of 531, but in reality, he's written four books. And the program has evolved a lot over time. My biggest recommendation, if you're gonna use the program, is to probably read one of the books. Affiliate links because you can gain a lot from learning more about the program and making it work for you. If I was gonna read just one of the books, I'd probably just read forever, as it has the most templates and changes to the program, but it does assume you're already familiar with 531. So you can watch videos like this and read all of his older articles online for free to cover any of the gaps in your knowledge. Or you could buy Beyond as a base point and forever later on, though Beyond, in my opinion, is probably the better laid out of the two. Hey, I'm back here to teach you how to get bigger without ever actually doing anything. And that's with deloading. Deloading is basically giving your body time to recover and build up. And depending on which version you're doing and how experienced you are lifting, there are alternatives to deloading every cycle. In Beyond 5 through 1, Jim Alters thinks you can perform two cycles before deloading. Again though, this video is more of an introduction than discussing all possible variations. Basically, you're going to perform your sets at a much lower weight and not AMRAP your final set. 
This is a week to really focus on your form and recovery. You're not testing yourself. Believe me, this program will wear on you physically and mentally, and this extra recovery time really helps. For accessories, cut out a set or go down a percentage of weight or cut it out altogether. Gluck wasn't here during that portion because he's never actually deloaded having refused to do so, but he's gonna come back in for the advice because he's always been good at just giving the tip. Follow the prescribed program. It does work when done right. If you're messing with it, you're probably messing it up. Yeah, lift all the weight. <laughs> That's really useful. You're gonna wanna warm up beforehand, five to 10 minutes, run through some bands, some light exercises to get your body temperature up and your heart rate up. And Jim has advice in his first book that you can just follow that sets, those sets and reps. Try hard. <laughs> That's super helpful. I'll just put the numbers up on the screen. The weights don't change based on how you're feeling, though there are joker sets and other variations. We're not gonna get into that in this video. Be the beast. <laughs> All right, don't train for more than two days in a row. Dance like no one's watching. <laughs> uh, take your diet and sleep seriously. Honestly, it's like a cheat code. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Let's just move on. So we're gonna take a minute to talk about our results real quick. And I would argue not to get too caught up on numbers, but it's the internet. So if we don't give some type of proof, somebody's gonna complain. Well, somebody's gonna complain anyway. So for squat, I put about 75 pounds on my max, which more important than that, I actually fixed a lot of my flaws in my, my squat form. I went from high bar to low bar, which is a big change in that 15 months. And I probably gained about three inches of depth on that squat. So having a consistent program that four forces you to kind of analyze your results was more important to me than the numbers themselves. Yeah, and when we started this program, I was relatively new to lifting, but I still increased my squat by 40 pounds. And then immediately after using small of junior, I hit my one rep max of 235 pounds. And to put that in perspective, she only weighs about 130 pounds. So <laughs> that's a lot of weight. Before my bench was sad, but now it's slightly less sad. I mean, in all honesty, I don't think I could have benched 100 pounds before this. And I benched 130 on this program, so. That's pretty good. Um, so my bench before this, I can actually remember the point in time I picked this program. I kept failing out for like months and months. Uh, I failed that at 260 pounds. I think for the full year before that, maybe I gained five or 10 pounds. And then using this program, I gained 30 plus pounds, which was huge for me. And then I went to Small Off Junior right after this and put, it, uh, put up 320 pounds for bench. For overhead press, more importantly than my number gains, which I did make and I will show, is my form change. Changes. And that is true for pretty much all of these lifts, except for bench. I never cheated bench. But what I found I was doing for overhead press was as my numbers were increasing and when I didn't have programs to kind of force me to track what I was doing is I was cutting my range of motion, maybe an inch at the top or the bottom or two inches at the top and the bottom. So sure, my numbers, my reps went up, but really I was I wasn't moving the bar as far. So this forced me, and this is one of my favorite things about having a good program, is it forced me to analyze what I was doing so that I knew the gains I was making were actually true to the numbers. Yeah, and if you thought my bench was sad, my overhead press max before this program was maybe 60 pounds, and on this program I hit 75 for five. I know it's crazy to think about, because I mean, look at these arms. With deadlift, this program really forced me to gain confidence in my form, and that's reflected in my numbers. I put 80 pounds on my one rep max and was able to do 225 10 times, and that's big. So I can remember for my deadlift, I remember a long time ago doing 315 for five, and during this program, I put like 100 pounds onto those reps. But more importantly than those weight gains was again the technique gain. So in round three or cycle three, I remember getting 315 for 15, which sounds great. But what I learned to do was to bounce the weight at the bottom. So I was gaining reps, but I was putting myself in a bad situation and then I hurt my back. So one of the good things about the program, and this is true of all good programs, is it forces you to analyze your results and that allows you to grow in many ways as a lifter. Yeah, and I enjoyed the program because it was simple and effective. <laughs> and she's saying that having done none of the research or the spreadsheets but it is true. And another great thing about the program is that since it's evolved so much over time, it will grow with you as a lifter. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next week. But she probably won't be here.